Hello? Greetings in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Uh, we welcome you to our Tuesday evening service, a time of teaching, a time of learning, and also a great time to get familiar with the things that are going on in our surrounding communities and the things that's going on in our surrounding areas. Uh, and just to become more familiar with the voice of God tonight, well, this evening rather, we're going to talk from our hearts. I'm going to speak from the heart of God, not just to you, not just to you, but to whomever is viewing watching will watch have watched and if you like what you hear on tonight please don't be shy it's not disrespectful if you hit that share button and share it or tag somebody tonight i want to address a lot of the things that are going on with the people of God and the things that we have allowed ourselves to get away from. And I'm going to start off as I'm going to speak now because I went before the Lord on this and I've been dealing with trying to see how can I put this out in such a way that it come off in love. Uh -huh. Not trying to discredit any other pastor, not trying to discredit anybody in their belief or what they practice or their religion, but simply want to set us free and get us back on the right track the first question is where is the focus of eternal life saints where is the focus where did we get off track how did church and leaders and preachers that go for whatever denomination non-denomination whatever independent ministry whatever dependent co-pending whatever or whatever religion it is that one may practice but if we are going to be called the church of the living God which is in Christ and we are the saints the Lord have a question and I thought it was just me but God wants to know from his people where is the focus on eternal life? We have gotten so far off from preaching salvation to sinners. We have gotten so far away from that yeah. until we don't want to offend nobody because we need the crowd. We need the crowd to look saved. We need the crowd to look anointed. We need the crowd to look like we fivefold ministry. But we have gotten so far away from preaching salvation to sinners. We stop preaching repentance to backsliders, fornicators, adulterers, adulterers, 
and even murderers and even to the church itself we don't preach repentance we have stopped preaching Jesus Christ and now people are preaching another gospel other than that which was written aforetime. The Bible says whatever things are written aforetime were written for our learning. That we through patient and comfort of the scripture might inherit eternal life. Jesus said search the scriptures and see. And if you think you have eternal life, he says search the scriptures. Yeah. You think you got salvation? Search the scriptures and see do your Definition of what you consider or what someone told you salvation is. Measure up to what salvation is out of the mouth of the written word of God. We have removed Christ's sufferings for all of mankind. We have removed that totally out of the way. So we no longer go into the epistle of Peter and preach what Peter said that Christ suffered in the flesh for us and we have to arm ourselves likewise with the same manner we no longer preach the apostles we don't preach the holy prophets we don't preach Jesus we don't talk about how he suffered for humanity we don't talk about how he shed his blood on the cross anymore and died for all sins and died for all sinners. We don't even go and include the resurrection from the dead. And the only time you really hear a message like that is when the preacher is hooping and he getting ready to close. It is so vaguely that it's not made mention throughout many ministers' messages. Now many people who come in the name of the Lord, they are coming to tell you what God said without even checking with God first. We have not only just removed Christ and his sufferings, but we have removed the hope of glory from its original stature. The hope of glory is Jesus Christ. Amen. We don't preach hope to people. We don't teach faith and how to operate in faith we just say activate your faith you can't activate something that you don't know the fullness of what it means so people now become faith walkers because they believe in stuff when God himself said let me speak now I've heard enough preachers and I done heard enough prophets and prophetess and apostles. I done heard enough of the pastors and bishops, elders and teachers, scholars and theologians. I want to hear what my people have to say. But then God say, since I wanted to hear and I heard, now I want them to hear and I need them to listen. It is okay to say that Jesus died and he rose again early. But we go and add to the Bible what the Bible did not say. And we go and we quote scriptures that's not scriptorial, biblical, Bible word. Such as he died one late Friday. Stayed in the grave all night Saturday. But rose early that Sunday morning and people shout their life away on a lie. When the Bible did not say Jesus was prepped on a Wednesday, died 
on a Thursday or a Friday, and it did not say he stayed dead all night Friday. Did not say that. Man have said that, and it sounded good for years. But God say in Revelation, whosoever shall add or take away from this book, he's talking about the Bible, shall it be added to him, and it shall be taken away from him in judgment. We got to get it right. Folks got questions about the God we serve. Folks are hungry for the Jesus that we serve. And they need to know about the Lord's Christ. They need to know about the God that's the salvation, the God of salvation. Not the God that want to give you a house. I'm getting ready to go deeper. They don't need to know about the God that's getting ready to do a turnaround in your life but yet you still unsaved. You're not saved. You're not born again. God say, my people don't even know what it means to be born again. They think being born again is the same thing Nicodemus thought. is to enter into your mother's womb a second time. But that's not how you get born again. You have to be born of the spirit and of the fire. And you have to be baptized by Jesus. Amen. God say they don't even talk about adoption. So people just walk in the house of God and already think that they are part of the body. You have to be adopted. They don't talk about predestination. So nothing is predetermined or predestinated. Nothing is already there before it's there no more. Everything is now going to happen when you believe it. I'm sorry. Faith operates whether you believe it or not. Because faith is an entity all by itself. And it's not separate or apart from God. Because God is faith. They teach people that the way to love is to despise the ones that's hating on you. So they preach, touch your neighbor and tell your neighbor, neighbor, if you hating on me, you need to move around because God getting ready to take me to my next level and I don't need you hating on me. We don't teach that in the house of God that your neighbor is your hater. The Bible say, love your neighbor as you would love thyself. God want to talk to his folks today. Are we listening? It's okay to go and say Jesus died and he rose early again and hold it until the end when you're hooping and hollering. Or you say before a paganistic holiday called Easter Sunday. And you try to soup it up by taking Easter out the way and call it Resurrection Sunday, when it changes on the calendar month after month, year after year, it never stays the same. If you think I'm lying, you can Google Easter for yourself. But I would that you would go back from year of 2000 and look at the year 2021 and get an Easter calendar. Get yourself 20 some years to look at. And see how many years of lies you've been following. See how many years of lies you've been walking in. See how many years of lies they've been telling you that after church we got an Easter egg hunt going on in the back. How can we mix clean stuff with unclean stuff? Profane stuff with unprofane stuff? How can we mix God with a paganistic day? Why are we putting God on the same level as a holiday that is full of paganism. But yet folks get mad when you come against that type of religion and tradition. They say, oh, I don't like that type of stuff. Well, guess what? When you go to heaven and God give you your judgment and say, why did you continue to follow it? When I spoke out and said, the day you hear my voice, harden not your heart. You harden your heart towards that preacher that was down there talking and telling you the raw, uncut, unadulterated, pure gospel 
and burden of the living God. He was telling you the truth to set your soul on fire so that you can get back to the rightful place you need to be and stay in the place you need to be concerning your sanctification, your sanct concerning your, your gratification in God and concerning your eternal salvation. And But yet and still you despise that messenger because you did not receive the message. God is going to deal with his people about all of these paganistic things that we are substituting and taking in the place of his glory. Amen. He's going to deal with it. Almost everything nowadays are about God wants to open doors of prosperity, give you a new house, a car. God now finna give you a business. Then this is to top it off. You got preachers on Facebook live, lying, speaking to an audience of people who might be sitting at home blazing a blunt, drinking a drink, and just got them on so they can make mockery of how they, and just text anything on their live, make them think that they really doing something. And they go and say, when they look down and see how many people are coming in or see the hearts and see the thumbs up, see the uh, care signs coming up and see this and see that, the stars moving and all this and watch what happened. They get to looking down to see who doing all of the talking and now they feel like they really doing something. And this is the word that they put out there to an audience of people without even knowing the spirit, without even knowing the fruit that they bear, without not even knowing the type of tree you preaching to. This is what they say. You got a calling on your life and it's to go to the nations. Who am I preaching to today? Come on up in here. That's what they say. But how you got a calling on your life? How? How do you have a calling on your life? How are you going to the nations? You just put a pen right down, God coming back. There is no new house given out by God. God is not going to give you a new house, listen to me, when you are not faithful and paying your own rent on time where you live now. God cannot go and put you in a new house. That's way more than what your rent is now and you pick up from rent to a mortgage and you can't even pay your rent on time. It's going to get deep. God is not going to give you a house when you don't meet the rent payment on time. How then can you pay your mortgage? Let's get deep. You don't know what type of loan you got to take out for that house. You don't even know what type of mortgage that you will be placed on. You know nothing about PMI, principal mortgage and interest rates. You don't know what the stocks are within that season, the reason why the house is selling for what it's selling for. You don't know how to go out and get you an adjuster or get you someone who can come out and survey that house for you. You don't know anything about buying a new house, but you listen to somebody say, God is getting ready to give you a new house when you can't even pay lights on time, water on time. You steal from the city of Shreveport Water Department. You stealing from Swepco. You stealing from Ocla by hooking up pipes and hooking up other kind of gas lines to your meter when they lock your, y'all know I ain't lying, when they lock your meter, but they tell you God is going to give you a house and then guess what, you won't even pay your landlord on time. How can God do something when the Bible say he does things decently and he does it in order? God is not into the business of giving you nothing that you can't seem to be faithful over the few things, but you're ready to be a ruler over much. The devil is a liar. You don't even know what type of mortgage you're entering into when you have to sit down and discuss at the day of signing. You don't know nothing about coming to the forefront, taking a house for zero down, but having your money set aside in your escrow. You don't know anything about having money set aside so that when a rainy day comes, you don't have to come 
running around bombing money or telling folks you need a GoFundMe account. But you want God to give you a new house out of the word of a mouth of a lying pastor, prophet, prophetess, preacher, apostles. The Bible says that many of them call themselves apostles. But I stick with the scripture. I have tried a lot of them and found that they are not what they say they are. They are not who they say they are. You don't even know about a convention alone. You don't know how to determine what is conventional and what is fixed mortgage rates. But you believe the word of a prophet. Don't expect the new house when you still tearing up the rent house. And then you calling the landlord telling him that stuff is breaking and you know good and well you and that Negro or you and that niggerette broke it. Tearing up folks house and then trying to put it on the landlord and you're trying to put it on the landlord to fix it. And then you go and say, well, I can't pay you no rent until this get fixed. The devil is a liar. What are you going to do if God do decide to try to give you your own? You're not going to take care of yours because if you can't take care of somebody else's, how can you then take care of yours? Same way it goes for the men of God that are out here preaching but won't take care of their house. Uh, won't take care of their house. The Bible say, how can you rule the house of God and you can't even rule your own house well? You don't even go home and give your wife the check. You give her allowance. The devil is a liar. She ain't a dog. She ain't a kid. How can you give your spouse that's supposed to be one with you allowance? Come on, somebody. Amen. Yes, Lord. Don't expect the new house when you running around dodging your landlord. You're going to dodge the mortgage people. You're going to set up an account for them to withdraw and the minute your check don't come like you want to and supposed to, you're going to start counseling out stuff. You find yourself in the negative. Now you owe the bank and you owe Wells Fargo for releasing the loan. Too much. Somebody say, help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. Let me address this concerning what I see too much of on social media. I see too much of too many preachers. Rather you be man or female. Man or woman, rather. Male or female. It's time to stop lying about the doors of prosperity. We got people on live constantly talking about doors of prosperity are open when you got folks who are still broke, struggling, ain't got a job, won't get a job, can't get a job. Folks who looking for jobs and jobs won't even hire them. Folks who got jobs and jobs is laying them off now because of the season that we in called the corona or COVID virus season. But you say doors of prosperity is open. Well, if there is no seed, there is no harvest. I know they're not going to like this, but this is raw truth. If there is no seed, there is no harvest. And money is not your seed. Doors of prosperity are to be preached or taught to a fully matured, disciplined group of people or person who knows when to spend if you're going to deal with money. How to spend and how much to spend. When not to spend. When to save, when to invest, and what to invest in. So for some of you that are watching, I really want you to share this because I'm going to get people. But you got most people coming on live telling you to sow, to give. That's to increase their pockets. 
that don't go into the kingdom. The kingdom of God is already rich. Yeah, yeah, yeah. From the kingdom of heaven, he releases blessings on earth. I want to help you here. That go for these pastors who sit in their car and preach practical messages with no spiritual application and no Holy Ghost revelation. But tell you to sow your seed and you are sowing into the kingdom. If you're going to sow back into the kingdom, then hear what the word of God says. Sowing into the kingdom is doing the work of God. That's going out, feeding the hungry, clothing the naked. That's rendering to Caesar what is Caesar and giving God what is God. If you're going to sow into the kingdom, that means you are sowing righteous fruits and you are sowing good seeds, which is love, peace, Meekness, joy, temperance, kindness. These are the fruits of the spirit that you sow into his kingdom. You can't go and sow a dollar into God's kingdom. The Bible says that God is rich in houses and in land. So it's nothing that one person can go and give you, you lying pastors. And you're lying saying you're sowing into the kingdom. The devil is a liar. You saw it into their kingdom. You saw it into their pockets. Because if they can preach to you out of their out of their homes or out of their cars or out of their places that they go and find barbershops or wherever they are preaching to you and telling you to sow. When you get sick, you can't get them to come from where they are to come right where you at. Most of them you say pray for me and they just sit praying hands. But they are actually not praying. God want to talk tonight. Are we listening? Prosperity is not given to downers. It's not given to downers. You say what is a downer? A downer or a group of people or a person who go blow every dime that they get. And then they get mad because they can't borrow from others to further their habits. But they will talk down on you for saying no when they don't even say a word when they get their piece of the pie. They don't even open their mouth and say anything when they get their cut. I don't see many pastors these days knowing that you got members in your ministry in the house of God and you know that they on a fixed monthly income through disability or social security. But I don't see the leader saying, God just told me that that little bonus check I got on my job he spoke to me while I was getting ready to prepare to minister and he said to give to the sister who keep giving her light bill money. Where are the preachers these days that will say God said and they will come out of their pocket and give instead of saying God said and will expect for you to come out of your pocket and give. Yeah. It's going to get deep tonight. And it's going to get heavy. We have been tricked and bamboozled. And many people walk away from the church building. And they walk away from ministries. Hurt. Because somebody done lied to them and proper lied. Somebody done sheared the sheep according to the gospel of what Jesus spoke on. When the hireling see a wolf, he runs and leaves the sheep. But Jeremiah said that the voice of the Lord or the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah saying, go and tell the pastors who eat up the fat from the sheep, who go and shear the sheep before time. In other words, that simply means that they go and shave the sheep fur off of them and sell it 
or save the wool rather. Thank you, Holy Ghost. And they sell it. And watch this. It's in the winter time. You know that sheep finna get sick. You don't shear the sheep in the winter and leave him clothless or woolless. You don't fleece them. But look at what's going on now. We got leaders fleecing the sheep. And the sheep are doing all they can to pitch every penny in and every nickel they can find. And some of them now are going into other stashes that they had put back for a rainy day just to make sure the pastors are the leaders of today can what? Walk around and say you sold into the kingdom? The devil is a liar. Prosperity isn't limited to just money. It's not just about money. Prosperity is a spiritual enrichment and enlightenment on the very things God is going to allow you to gain in this life and in the life to come. That's what real prosperity is. Prosperity is connected to health. He said in Jude, I wish above all things that you will prosper and be in health even as your soul prospering. So prosperity is not just limited to wealth and money. But if your health is not there, how can you work to be prosperous? Let me deal with this right here. God is going to give you a business. And then they go and prophesy and say, I see God setting you up for two businesses in this year. God getting ready to open the door for multiple businesses for you in this season. Number one, it sound good. You shout. The music sound professional. They on point. They rather in key G or they in B or they in C. But they got it sounding good. And they got you just shouting and passing out. But number one, about this so-called word of the Lord that they gave out of their mouth. This is the first thing. Listen, you know nothing about balancing books. But you're going to start two or multiple or a business. You know nothing about being your own CPA, but you gon' have business or businesses in this season. You don't even know the first step to start looking on how to file for a tax EIN. That's called tax identification. You don't have no occupational license or opposites license. You know nothing about having a self-owned business work or business coming out of your home. You don't know how to separate your home business from your personal home. You know nothing about Secretary of State paperwork filing for your amendments and your auto codes or your auto codes of organization and operation. But you're going to go start a business. You don't know nothing about filing quarterly taxes on your payroll. But you want to start a business. Off of somebody telling you God said it. All because you came out of your pocket with $300. All because you went out and bought an outfit for a convention that you Got the tag still on the inside. Because you plan on taking that back. You really can't afford it. You were stunned. Y'all know I ain't lying. Every dime the business make is supposed to be for the business. Not for you to go out eating and then 
find yourself have to pay some business dues. You got to go and business needs something and you ain't got the money now. So you got to go get a small business loan. Now an angel investor invests in your business and take 30% or even 70 and give you 30% of the share of your own business. But you say God said and I heard God tell that man or that woman of God that God is going to give me a business. But now your business going through that you're trying to store. And then you had a title loan put your car title up just to get a loan to help support the business. Your business don't have enough revenue. Revenue. To support itself for a couple of years when it starts. But you ready to jump, shout, scream, lose your, lose your hair, your wig, get out of your clothes, and holler, I'm dancing like David did before the Lord. <laughs> and then when you look up, you come to find out that the business don't have nothing to support itself. So it's starting to fall. You will be closed or filing a closure of business before you even get started good. You'll be filing for that. Number four, you can't run a business with people who come when they want to and expect to get paid cash after every shift. And if you run in a restaurant or trying to run a restaurant, these same folks want to feed their family, their friends, and their side pieces or their baby mama to keep them off of child support. So they lie like they co-owner of the business, manager over the business, so they won't have to get put on child support and just giving away your stuff that your business is, your production and produce, and all of your quality stuff that you bringing in for the business, they taking it right out the door, feeding other folks with it. All this can happen while you trying to become a business owner, operating off of what somebody else said without doing the proper research. I'm getting a little deep here. This might sting, but just fasten your seatbelt because I'm going up through the turbulence. Some friends, you cannot put them in your business when you start it. I don't care how good they talk. I don't care if you went to school together. I don't care if we slept in the same house together. You slept at the foot of the bed, I slept at the head of the bed. But some folks that say they're your friends don't have it in them to help promote the business that you will start. They'll pull it and take it down as soon as it get open. And then let me tell you what they would do. They'll turn around when you got to let them go for not being productive enough. They will turn around and file for unemployment or underpaid wages and then file a lawsuit against you and your company and will win in court. That's your friend. I'm getting ready to hit home here. Some family members can't work in your business with you. Because just as simple as that, that's just it. You just got to learn to say you might be daddy, mama, sister, brother, cousin, ain't his uncle. No. Well, I'm trying to help you. You know we family. No. Because you think there's going to be some kinfolk freedom around here. Some family salvation around here. Now I'm going to say this. Not even in ministry all the time can you have family working with you in ministry. You can't expect that. You can't expect them because they family to come work with you in ministry. Because when it's time to rebuke them and reprove them and it's time to discipline them 
Then they want to take an attitude and they'll walk out on you and then turn around and go and lie to everybody like you're the one that's doing them so much wrong. But people fail to realize to look at their character and look at what they are doing and then not what they saying, but look at how that tree is producing its fruit. You can't put some family folks on your ministerial paperwork. God will punish the ministry constantly. His hand will be against it. Because when you put folks on your ministry paperwork just because you want to say you got a ministry, let me tell you what will happen. If they ain't lining up with God, it's going to cost your ministry business not to line up with God. And I'm a living witness. God will start plucking stuff down and removing stuff until you put his stuff back in a holy and in a righteous state that it's supposed to be in from the start. Oh, yes, amen. amen. Oh, hallelujah right there. Jesus. You can't start no business. You can't make a menu up and actually cook what's on the menu. You tell somebody, you got a restaurant and you got your grand opening. And the minute we come to the grand opening, you got this name nobody never heard of because you're trying to be fancy. We got some sugini over here. What is sugini? And I look at it and say, that ain't nothing but some rotel and chicken feathers zini put together. What you trying to feed me? This look like beef screwed and all. You trying to soul plane me and send me to the bathroom. It's hard to walk in a lie. It's hard to walk in the lie when the truth is right in your face. Nowadays, anybody can start a church. Anybody. The government don't care if you are or are not. A called chosen vessel of the most high. The government don't care. Long as you file your paperwork correctly and give them what they know they gonna get. They happy. So now that it's just not hard to go and say, oh, I don't like what the preacher preach no more. I don't like the pastor because he stopped hooping. He stopped flipping and hopping over on top of stuff and walking on chairs. He stopped turning car wheels and running up the wall, hitting no hand backwards. I don't like the pastor because he don't walk outside and preach all the way across the street and walk way back up here just to show that God can keep the mics way out there and we hear it in here. I don't like the pastor no more because... He on me too hard about every little thing, and he just won't let me breathe. And I gotta go because I'm sick of the pastor, and he don't give me enough preaching time. And I'm starting to be more anointed than he is, and he can't see it. And God is getting ready to sit him down and raise me up because my church ain't gonna be nothing like he is. And, and, and guess what? Anybody can go and start a church, in a, and, and anybody can go start a ministry, and guess what? the first place they go. They go straight to social media with it. And they call themselves a pastor. Here we go. Let's go. I came to fight tonight. Pastors. First and foremost, pastors, you must be chosen by God if you're going to be a pastor. Can't no other pastor tell you that God called you to be a pastor. They can only confirm that God is calling you to be a leader. And if you really want to become a pastor, you don't learn the role of a pastor while you serving in the church. Well, tell me, what do I need to learn then? You need to learn the role of a leader while you serving as a follower. Boy, that's powerful. Because many people don't know how to lead. 
Because they can't even get their steps right when it's time to follow. So pastors must be chosen by God and you have to be anointed by Christ. But you need to be apt to teach and know how to truly, rightly divide the word of truth. And the only way you can do that is by studying the Bible, eating the book, the whole scroll, studying the scriptures, searching the scriptures, and receiving revelation, not from Noah Jones, not from T.D. Jakes, and taking his message in Noah's and putting it together, not from Kreplo Dollar, and because he don't hoop, you know how to hoop his message so it don't sound like Creflo said it. Not from Fred Price because you don't see him on television in much. Not taking Joel Osteen, hi, his inspirational messages and make them sound so strong and come from, so, so just like God is so strong in it and anointed coming behind it and power. And for women, not taking Juanita Bottom and Ja'Kaya Card messages and trying to preach it because you know folks don't know who them folks really are. But it comes because you study and you meditate day and night on his word. And he, that's God, that's Christ, have to put the word of revelation on the inside. And if he don't reveal it to you, it can't be revealed. The second thing concerning pastors, they must be thoroughly, they must be versed in the doctrine of Christ and their job is to preach the word of God, not to preach about the football game, not to be giving people old wise fable, which ain't nothing but a lie because they heard another preacher say it. You know what an old wise fable is? Because the Bible says shun old wise fables. They say flee from that because they lead to more ungodliness. An old wise fable is an old lie. A old lie is this right here. I knew a woman one day who was, had a son and, and her son was in a lot of trouble with the police. And her son, y'all don't hear me. And that woman's son got one day caught up by the police. And the police arrested that son. And that mother was an old widow woman who... The son didn't have a daddy, and she went to the courts to try to plead for her son. How'd she do that all in one day? Then the mother went and she, uh, mm, uh put me in G, if you will. And then, uh, the mother went down and talked to, she talked to, y'all don't hear me. No, we can't understand you. She went up to the old sanctified church, and when she went to the sanctified church, she stopped praying, but when she left the sanctified church, her son was still in jail, and then she called on God. God opened the doors and touched the prisoners and her son came out. Now wait a minute, hold up. Hold up. That don't sound right, preacher, but you preaching it. And you got folks up there that they is come out. Preach. Yes, sir. Come on, God. Come on. Preach, pastor. What are you preaching, pastor? Pastor, preacher. You don't know nothing this man say. You got to shun these old wise fables. Stuff such as come on over the table is spread and the feast of the Lord is going on and then say the Bible said. But there is no scripture in the Bible that say come on over the table is spread and the feast of the Lord is going on. No, it said he has prepared a table before my enemies in my presence right there. 
or he had prepared a table before me in the presence of my enemy. Pastors, since everybody want to start a social media pastoral trend, preaching and pastoring isn't everybody's calling while you on Facebook live. You looking at a photo that's in a circle and really can't see who it is in that photo but you read the name and there it is. You drop a prophetic word. You say things such as not only do God got a calling on your life, but God called you to preach the gospel. And watch how they do. They make it sound so good. God calling you to the nations. And God is getting ready. Yeah. Because God said in these last days, I got to pull out my spirit upon all flesh in your sons and your daughters. He that love my brother, come on, send me some hearts. Your sons and your daughters, come on. Somebody on this line right now, God told me to tell you, you got a strong calling on your life. God can ready to send you to the nations. Come on with this. What causes you to believe as a leader that we have the God-given word to utter out of our spirit and put thus said the Lord there when thus said not the Lord. What give us the right to go and prophesy that God is going to make somebody else a pastor who is first of all not even a faithful member or a follower in their own church. Not everybody is called to be a preacher or a pastor. So what? Because you've been in church a long time and you know how to mimic the preacher. That don't make you called. So what? Because people prophesied that God said it's elevation time for you. You better listen to what that is. Elevation means to lift up. Now hear what the scriptures say. Jesus said it's better to be asked up than to be told to come down. See, pe people will put you up but God would just tell you, come on down. And watch what Jesus said. He that exalted himself shall be abased. But he that humbled himself shall be exalted. Watch this. In due time. You don't know when that time is due because you're too humble. And humble folks don't walk around worrying about when is it going to be my time. Real humble folks not even looking for their time because they already know that they're going to be accounted as a sheep waiting for the slaughter. And let me shine light on some of this. There is no such thing as my anointing. You don't own that. You have not shed blood for that. You did not hang on a rugged cross for that. You didn't have to open a blind eye. If this show anointing, then why are we are not doing greater works than what Jesus? 
Jesus did. Why is folks dying with the COVID virus and yet you talk about my anointing? Why is cancer still in folks' body and you holler about my anointing? It's not yours. Give God back his anointing. It don't belong to us. It's Christ who is the anointed one. That's why God said, my glory I will not share with another. You can't separate the anointing and the glory. Those two work together. So what? Because somebody told you it's elevation time. What happened to going back to the leader of the house? Before you make a move. And asking God first. Then you go ask that God may have the Lord reveal my calling unto you. You'll find out if that leader is either either jealous or he's blind like Eli. Uh -huh. But Eli had enough sense to tell Samuel. Samuel heard the voice of the Lord. But Samuel was not familiar with the voice of the Lord. Samuel grew up in the house of the Lord. But God did not talk to Samuel until an appointed time and watch the order. Samuel goes to Eli and he says, did you call me? So that means that God's voice and Eli's voice sounded similar or sounded just alike to Samuel. And Samuel went to Eli and said, did you call me? Eli said, no, I didn't call you. Go back and lay down. Then he heard the name getting called again. Samuel, Samuel. He jumps up and he runs and he said, sir, did you call me? Here am I. He said, no, I did not call you. Go lay back down. By this time, Eli thinking now, hmm, if he keep hearing it, it sound like me. It's not a familiar spirit. It got to be God calling him now. Watch this. Third time. Sir, did you call it? He said, no. But if you hear it again, then say, here am I. Speak, Lord. Thy servant hear you. So if Samuel had to go to the person he was serving under to get confirmation of what God was doing, and Samuel still did not step up as a judge or a prophet until Eli closed his eyes and took his rest. Many people come to ministry, get ordained within the same year that they just joined the church. And after they get ordained, they think they're ready to run out there and fight when you don't even know how to do real spiritual warfare. You don't know nothing about the wiles of the devil. You don't know anything about demonic demons and lunatic spirit, jackal spirit, witches, and real warlocks. You don't even know that there is a power from the dark side that can throw their hands at you and lift you off your feet. But you think you're ready for real ministry. What are you going to do when real demons walk into your building that you start? Real demons. Folks who, when they come in, they don't even walk human. They face start shifting right before everybody. Are you going to tell those that have faith to stay? Or are you going to run out the back door with them and push down the uh, administrators trying to get out of the building? What's going to happen when naked women walk into church and start masturbating? Naked men walk into church and start masturbating. And then you say you ready for spiritual warfare. How you going to deal with that? What you going to do? Talk, tell the church, come on church, it's time to pray. We got to pray the devil out. What you going to do? Run them back out there with the devil? Or are you going to clothe them, but you going to get the demon out of him? But you going to make sure there's some clothes for them? Ministry in the house of God is supposed to be everything a person needs. Why do folks walk in sick and walk out dead? But you say you call. You can't lay hands on the sick and watch them recover. Why? 
because you don't practice laying hands on yourself when you sick. Do you know how many pastors I see sneaking up there to Arsenal trying to get their little dose because they sick? You know how many leaders die preaching the gospel but preach healing to so many folks but they died with cancer? The devil is a liar. How is it that we die with sickness and we preach and heal it? When the Bible says that Jesus said, you can speak and say, physician, heal thyself. Now I'm not saying that some folks won't go out because that might be God's will. But God forbid that I let myself just die when all this word got life in it, ruah. Breath in it, new life, new life, revelation, healing, power. They got the anointing in it that's destroying yokes and removing burdens and that's able to heal your body. Ain't no way. You tired preachers, sit down. Because we real ones are rising up. And I'm getting fed up with you hypocrites. You Facebook live preachers, but you nighttime 1 a.m. in the morning creepers. God coming for you. You've been warned. Stop letting Facebook live, TikTok preachers, prophets, prophetess, cause you to disobey leadership. Where you serve as a member, stop letting them cause you to be uprooted because they jumping in your IG, your IDM or whatever you want to call it, and jumping in your message, sending you links to click on, and telling you lies like your season is up. You stop letting other folks chase you out of the place God put you in when you know ain't nothing but authentic truth in the house. Don't make no sense that folks that leave God-ordained ministries and God-ordained buildings where the preacher is God-ordained and you go and join up with some familiar spirit and some doggone seducing spirit with your itching ears. And all they come to do is just satisfy your flesh. You shouldn't let people uproot you because it's real out here in the vineyard. The vineyard is nothing that you just walk in and can pick grapes and vines. And, ooh, it's fruitful here. Oh, yeah. And preachers that are preaching, pastors that are pastors, stop letting other pastors come in and steal the flock from right under you. Start educating your people to stay rooted and stay planted. Start educating and training them to stay where God has put you. And I'm, I'm going to say this. Wherever God brings you deliverance, that's the house you need to be in. If you get healed at, over there at Bishop Clarence Church, don't run over here to Apostle Bolden after Bishop Clarence tarried with you because Apostle Bolden going to send you back to Bishop Clarence when I know you running from discipline. And pastors, stop taking other folks' ministerial staff in when you know good and well that they running because they out of order. Send them folks back home. Send them back home. You know why I say that? Because you're going to bring trouble from God into your home. God going to trouble them by snatching other folks up thinking they doing something. You know, I've seen that many times. Folks go and get somebody else's ministerial staff, and guess what they do? They put them out there on Facebook Live. I ain't been seen a church go live, but all of a sudden you see this church live, and you be like, wow, look who over there. You so humble, you not tripping. Because you don't hold on to people that call them your sheep. You know they're God's people. Rather they acting like a sheep or not, but they're God's people. So you you learn how to just pray and release. But that pastor, oh, they really think they got something. But the 
minute that person go contrary, the minute God won't even let that person preach, because that person get up there online and get lost, don't know what they finna say, and go, because <laughs> uh, uh, why? You do know because what you saw them doing in somebody else's ministry, that they was powerful and anointed. No, they was anointed just for that ministry, but they wasn't anointed to be in your ministry. Y'all better get it right. Man, we'll stop all this stuff. We'll stop the world from being like it is if the church get it right. Get right, church, and let's go home. Ain't nobody going home because the church ain't getting right. Jesus, I, I, at the close, I come back with some more this. Now, this is good, and I don't want to just drop it like this, but demons are real, and I'm closing with this. Demons are real. Not only are demons real, evil spirits are real. And not just evil spirits, but real demonic demons, seducing spirits, are out here and what they are doing is they are depositing their snake-like spirits and in, right into the very belly of many of people that call themselves God's people. They are putting their spirit into these folks' belly and now watch this. They are receiving duplicates and carbon copies and clones in the spirit. And when it's time for them to give birth, they're birthing out demons after demons after demons after demons and devils after devils. And they are using and attacking the ones that are untrained. They are using and attacking the ones that are unequipped. They are not equipped to handle real spiritual warfare. I had to say this to one person. It did not hurt my feelings. I know this person did not like it when I said it, but I said what I said and I meant what I said. A particular person called. Well, they first they reached out. It was some years ago. They reached out to me and they asked, can they call? And I said, sure. And that person called me. Because at that time, my number was still the same. And when they called me, the first thing they went doing was rumbling. <laughs> and I stopped them and I said, hey, you can't come over there with us. I said, the reason why you can't come over there with us, because if you talking about the pastor like you doing to me, I can only imagine what you're going to say about me to somebody else. Because I ain't no different than who you talking about. Because the same holy and righteous and the same thing that that person stands for and they talk about being sanctified because ain't nothing wrong with being sanctified. Folks attack sanctification. But that's why you got so many... I, I, that's why you got so many women with their booze all out and they dress too tight and they ain't got no dog on drawers under them skirts that they wear in church and they stand in a platform with apple bottoms or six inch heels on, can't even shout. All they can do is run like this in one spot because they dress too tight. But the first thing they do is turn their butt so everybody can see it. Turn their butt. They turn their butt just like they do their Facebook pictures. Turn their butt. This is the glory of God. You are a liar to hell. That's the glory of the devil. That's that pork that you eat. Because guess what? One day you're going to get old, and I'm going to see if the glory of God still going to be standing up there. Ah, uh, yes, amen. No, it's going to drop down to the floor like Chigolo or Jello. And what used to love, you better pray to God and still love, love I mean, lust you. Ooh, I'm on my church floor. This the glory. Oh, God. I, I thank God I don't look like what I've been through. You look like you've been ran through. What you mean? Holy women. Getting online. Perking their lips up. All in the camera. Holy women. Who's supposed to be set apart. Holy men. All lies. Holy is supposed to be holy pastors live in the gym, showing they crouch, working out. That woman on there talking about, ooh, you sure working out. Why you won't train with me? You so stupid.
with you, Samson. You don't even know that this is a Delilah. Man, I've been through some stuff. I've been there, done that, got my t-shirt hat, and I keep my baseball bat just in case they try to pull out the old me. I say, yeah, come on, let me back him out of here then. Ain't no devil in hell causing me to slip. My foot almost slipped looking at the wicked. Don't let it slip. Shake yourself. Reposition yourself. Transform your mind. Renew your mind. If you in a church that you can't be used, stop buying that talk and go to God and say, Lord, I need to be somewhere where not only I can be used, but God, I can be utilized and I can be stirred up in the gift that you have given me. Ask God to send you somewhere where your ministry or your gift will be effective versus being in places that you study coming and warming up the morning, bitch. You got some folks who are in places they don't need to be in. When a person tell me I've left that ministry because then I know I look at the character of that pastor. I go to God and I pray about that leader and ask God to show me the truth of the heart of that leader. And when God showed me that that leader is a leader of strong faith and strong conviction to preach the truth. Because I'm convicted to convict. I'm not at liberty to convict and yet I feel separated from being convicted. No. I'm Christ bond servant. I'm guilty of something. That's right. So therefore, when I go to God and I ask him about the character and all the heart of that leader, and he showed me, I don't have to go find that leader. I just make sure I distance myself from that person and don't deal with them. Because people nowadays are wanting to hear, God, give me, give me, give me. But don't ask me for nothing in return. God, I won't, won't, won't. But I ain't going to wait. Like the words say, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. Mount up with wings as an eagle. They're not waiting. No. I don't want to wait. So I'm going to let the devil put something out there called PVP or other stuff. Not going to wait. They're going to let the devil do what he want to do. I stopped saying I don't mind waiting. I start telling the truth. I do mind waiting. I stop saying, Lord, whatever you're doing in this season, don't do it without me. And I start going to do it without him because it ain't my season. Ah. I'm close. Father in heaven, we bless you for who you are. Thank you for this harsh sounding truth. But God, there was a time that Jesus just plainly spoke and it wasn't in a parable. He just spoke plainly to the people and many turned away because they said this is a hard saying. Some things is hard for us to digest, but in due time, our flesh might not want it, but our spirit have heard it. Yes, Father, I pray that this ministry, what it has ministered today, I pray that it will minister to the hearts of the people. Yes, and that it will minister to the hearts of whoever would just stop to look and listen and open up their ears to hear what the spirit has to say to the church. Father, I pray for the people all over. I pray for those who want to be in ministry. 
I pray for those who think that they want to be in ministry and those who say they don't want to be, but you're calling them into ministry. Yes. I even pray for the ones that are tired because of ministry. They've been beat down. They've been ostracized. They've been pulled on every which way. And they don't feel like that they are valuable enough to get up and even do it. Father, we speak life right now. Not just in this place, but in every place. Be healed in your mind. Be healed in your heart. Be healed in your spirit. Wait on the Lord and be of good courage, and he shall strengthen your heart. Again, I say wait. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 God bless you. May the Lord keep you. That is our prayer for you on this evening. Go in the grace and grow in the knowledge of God in the sight of Christ and man. God bless you. May the Lord keep you.